This video will focus on line weights. AutoCAD makes line weights somewhat confusing for new users, and they don't do that intentionally, obviously, but they uh, offer many different methods for controlling line weights. And in the process, it uh, can be a little overwhelming when someone's trying to learn CAD. Part of the reason uh, that it's confusing is because AutoCAD has been around for so long, and the evolution of how line weights have been controlled over the years of its development uh, has kind of changed. So there's the old-fashioned ways, there's the newer ways, and different companies um, use different options. So that's why it can be a little bit intimidating. The first thing to think about, um, and this is kind of the last thing that you actually do in the process, but you have to make the decision early on, so that's why it needs to be brought up now, is when you print, and that can be either from model space or paper space, um, at the upper right corner of your plot dialog box, uh, if you'll see a uh, field here called plot style table, and mine says none right now, but uh, you can see that there are multiple options here. If you don't have that setting available, your plot settings may be kind of uh, hidden like this uh, with the arrow at the lower right corner. And so you can expand those by clicking on the, the arrow to get to the plot style table pull down. The reason this is important is because this is kind of the ultimate deciding factor um, in terms of how the settings are being applied to the actual print itself. So most companies have a plot style table file set up here that they use, and then that has to correlate with how you control your line weights in the CAD file. Now AutoCAD does come with several different types of plot style tables. so. You could uh, choose one of these and use it as a starting point and then kind of uh, modify it to create your own or kind of use it the way that AutoCAD provides it for you. So if we look at something like the monochrome CTB, and I'm going to come back to talk about that CTB in a moment as well, uh, that can give us kind of a starting point for knowing how line weights can be controlled. And then you can answer the question about, do you want this plot style table to be applied to all layouts? So I would choose yes. And you can click on the edit button immediately to the right of that in order to see kind of how it's set up. So on the form view tab, I think that's usually the easiest tab to look at. You can go through all the colors, 201 through 256 or 255, and see that the line weight is, to sit, is set to use object line weight. So that's kind of the very important field that you'd have to look at when you select a plot style table and you want to see how it's going to work. Line weight is set to use object line weight. So what that means is if you're planning to use the monochrome CTB, then in your layer manager, you could use the line weight column right here in order to control the line weights. And that's a very straightforward way for most new users. So that's a way that I would often suggest as a starting point that you control your line weights. Now that does mean if you override a line weight for an individual object, like in the properties palette for example, you can choose a specific line weight for an object rather than keeping it by layer. You can also do that in the ribbon oftentimes, depending on how your cat is set up. This is generally a very bad idea because then if you need to modify the line weights, you have to go back to each individual entity to change it. So generally speaking, you want to kind of use your layers to organize things and then leave the object's line weight set to by layer. And then in your layer manager, that's where you would select the line weight for a particular type of object, like walls could be dark, you know, furniture can be light, etc. And that does take a little experience to know, okay, what does a 007 look like compared to a 014 or something like that? Normally when I print, I wouldn't use a line weight that's much darker than maybe uh, 028 or 031. That gets to be very bold. And for your lightest line weights, uh, it is okay to use 00 or 002, and uh, it'll still be visible. So that's kind of one fundamental way that line weights can work, is you select it in your layer manager, and then you would use the plot style table that corresponds based upon it being set to use object line weight. Now, there are other options, and that's where it starts to become confusing. A lot of uh, architecture firms use a different method entirely, which is tied to colors. So I selected this other uh, CTB file, 
and it's set up completely differently. And that's why you have to go and look and see by editing in order to see how it's going to work. So if you look at this one, you can see each color has a specific line weight assigned here in the plot style table. So for example, magenta is 0.027, that's quite dark, and then red is 0.006, so that's pretty light. So there's a correlation between color and line weight. A lot of architecture firms use this method because it's been around a long time and that's how AutoCAD kind of started uh, many years ago. And so uh, firms don't want to change, so they just kind of keep using the same method over the course of their history. And so they still use this method now very, very often in the field. One other thing I'll mention while we're here is screening. Screening right here is listed as 100. And what that means is it will print with a black line. So that's kind of normal. You usually do want to print with a black line. But there are times when you want things to print much lighter in order to kind of make them recede graphically. If that's the case, you can set several colors uh, or uh, however you want to do it to print with a screening less than 100, maybe 50 or 75 or 40, and then it will print with a gray line. So the lower the number, the lighter the gray, while 100 will be a black line. So that's another option um, to control your line weights with a little more variation. Now take note when I say print with a black line or a gray line, that's assuming that the color property is set to black here in the editor for that CTB that you're looking at. Because there are some tables that don't print with black lines. So if you look at one of those, then you can see it says use object color. So 90% of the time, if you're doing technical drawings, you're gonna wanna stay on one of these that has black set for all the colors and then it'll print with normal black lines even though you see the colored lines on the drawing screen. Now if you uh, want to select all these at once like let's say you're modifying your own CTB you can select them all and then choose use black or use object color you can select use object line weight etc by modifying them all at once so that speeds up the editing process quite a bit. Now, up to this point, we've talked about CTBs. That stands for color table. There's a whole other system. And so now here we're getting, getting even more confusing. Well, this whole other system is called STBs, or style table. If you go to make a new file and look at the templates that are available, you will often see that some of the templates are listed in the name of the template CTB or STB. This is a decision that is also made very, very early in the process, and that's because most firms have one method that they use. So you have to kind of even decide before you create your file and you choose a template to use, which method you want to use. It's kind of counterintuitive that way. It is possible to convert your file back and forth, but most of the time you want to get one method down and then use the template that corresponds so whether you want to use CTBs or STBs. So up to this point, I've talked about the CTBs. The STBs is an, an entirely different system. So yet another option. And that's where AutoCAD is confusing is there's so many options. So I made a new file from the STB template. And then when you go to print, you'll notice that it offers STB files instead of CTB files. Both of those are saved in the same folder. But because of the fact that it's tied in with the template that you use, the file is preset to use one or the other. Now, if you do want to change, you can type convert p styles at the command line, and that will switch back and forth if you use the wrong template on accident. But the idea of the STBs is a whole other system again. So in your layer manager now, If you go a little further to the right, you'll notice that there is a, a column for plot style. And when you select that, you can choose between whatever plot styles are set up in the plot style table that has been applied to the file. So in this case, it has normal, invisible, full saturation, 50%, 25%, and standard. You'll notice at the bottom that you can choose which STB file that you're pulling information from. So you might, for example, change to the AIA standard because it has a more normal list of plot styles. And now you can see things like fine, thin, medium, wide, extra wide. So the names obviously correlate with the line weights. 
So if I wanted uh, this particular layer, let me choose, let me make a new layer here so that uh, that will make more sense. Let's say I'm uh, making a wall layer. I'll choose a color other than white for that. And then now I can choose for my plot style. I'm going to change to AIA standard. And then I would choose maybe extra wide because this is my wall layer. So that's the basic concept of how the STB works. Now, if we want to go and edit that, and let's see how it's set up a little bit because it is different. So it's, you'll notice again here, you can choose the AIA standard or whichever one you want. If you want to modify your own, you can do that. And I'll come back to that in a second. So AIA standard, I'm going to hit edit. And then again on the form view, I think it's a little easier to, to read, but you can uh, play with the table view tab if you want. So now I can go and look at extra wide and you can see how the line weight is set up. Um, you, it's set to millimeters right now, but if you click edit line weights, you can switch that to inches, which I will do now. And so that's where the line weight is derived from. And then you can see thin is obviously thinner, medium is the next step up, etc. So you can add as many different kind of sub styles here as you need. You can delete ones if you don't want as many. So you have this kind of easier correlation of set up six or seven uh, categories, you know, thin, medium, heavy, screened, or whatever you want. And then in your layer manager, you choose the one based upon the name. So in some ways, it's easier f if you were uh, running an architecture firm, it would be easier to set up those categories for your staff in advance, and then they can choose the ones they want. Um, but if you want more control, it might be easier to use the CTBs uh, to quickly just switch to from one line weight to another in order to fine tune it. So a lot of firms use CTBs because they've been around longer. It's more of the traditional way. The STBs is a little bit newer system. Uh, in some ways, it gives you more control because you can just set up the categories that you want and then go and edit them later. So it's very subjective, but you can see how there's many options. Now, if you want to create your own STB or CTB or modify one of these, one option to get to um, the actual folder where these are saved is going to the pull down menu and then print and then manage plot styles. Manage plot styles. And that just opens the folder of where those are saved on your computer. So you can see how the CTBs and the STBs are kind of all mixed up together. So you can make a copy of a file very easily, and then you can even double click on it here, and it will open in the normal editor. So you can make your own file, name, rename it here to whatever you want, um, and then uh, double click to edit it and get into adjust those line weights to the system that you think will work best for you. As long as you're consistent in how you print, that's the only thing that matters. So that's a little bit about how to control line weights. Now I want to clarify a couple small points. Line weights generally will not show up on screen, only when you print. Uh, sometimes students get confused by that because they expect to see the uh, changes on screen. If you do want to get some rough idea of line weights on screen, you can use the LWT button at the bottom and that will give you a generic idea of what your line weight variations look. You can see when I press that, this line now appears to have a thickness. So it's going to be very kind of rudimentary. I would not rely on it to give you an exact line weight thickness idea. Um, the best option is to really just make a print and then look at it there. But that gives you some concept. The other thing that I wanted to mention is I would not play with the thickness here in the properties palette for an object because that has nothing to do with line weights. So don't be confused by that. One other small comment is if you're dealing with a polyline, you have the option to assign a specific width. And some people use that for line weight control. Uh, you can do that in uh, kind of uh, rare instances where you needed a very unusual thickness. Uh, make it a polyline and then assign a global width 